Hey friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. My name is Jake. We're taking a look at this knife today. This is the Vipera by Revo Knives. Revo Knives is a up and coming knife company. It's a sort of uh, sibling company to uh, Blade Runner Systems, who makes a lot of very good higher end knives. Uh, some really nice uh, balisongs uh, and other knives as well. Uh, I just reviewed yesterday, I think it was, the uh, Eon, which is a nice integral. And for those of us who usually buy budget knives, we now have the Revo knives and the Vipera. If you want something small, I've reviewed a few other Revo knives, uh, normal size folders, but this is their first small knife, about two inch blade, under five inches total, light little knife. I think these kind of knives are underrated, and I like small knives. If you're interested in little knives, then after this commercial break, the full review will be right on its way. So a nice close look at this thing. I think it looks quite good. Uh, size comparison first. We always do the Ontario Rat. Oh, I can't even get it on the screen. Where is it? There we go. There we go. It's on the screen there. Yeah, this is a small knife. It doesn't even uh, compete at all with uh, a knife like the Ontario Rat. Uh, this video will get on the Wee Wednesday playlist, even though it's not Wednesday when this comes out. But uh, it is one of those Wee knives. Uh, W-E-E. -E. Wee knives. Uh, we've got a clip point here, and then it's a hall belly, a nice little hollow grind, uh, a hole here for deployment, some jimping on the spine of the blade here. Uh, not a sort of separate sharpness choil, but sort of a sh sharpness choil there. I'd like it to be a little bit bigger or have that plunge not be quite as gradual. So like the sharpening goes up the plunge a little bit right here, but that's pretty common on budget knives. Uh, G10. Uh, the G10 comes in four colors. Let's take a look at those. And uh, what we've got is a slight slope back and then the backspacer becomes the lanyard hole as well. And that's got some jimping all the way along it. And then on that angled part there too, you can fit 550 paracord through there. So that's a good thing if you so choose. The uh, flat G10 helps reduce expense in manufacturing as well, but they took the step of milling a little bit here to make it a little bit thinner. Uh, the blade has got a nice thickness. It's just a little bit under half of an inch, which makes it a little bit better for hanging on to uh, than some of my really small Sanrin Mews. Uh, a lot of those wee knives are actually very thin and it's not that easy to get a good grip on them. Um, of course, some of them they make are a little bit thicker, and with this a little bit thicker, this is actually a very useful little knife because you can get a comfortable, solid grip on it. And uh, like I've said several times in my videos, you use the first inch and a half to two inches of a blade for 90% of what you cut, or at least I do. And uh, so with a two inch blade, you know, you've got a knife that can do most of what you need to do. Uh, as an urban EDC knife, and uh, this thing's nice and small. Not scary, and yet effective. And uh, quite effective. Uh, with the clip point here, it does a good job of piercing when you need to, and the hollow grind helps it to uh, slice fairly well. It's not, you know, a food preparation knife or anything like that, but opening packages, taking care of small issues, you know, this knife does them just fine. You've noticed there's a pocket clip, and the pocket clip looks, at least to me, a little out of place. And so some people are going to choose to just take the pocket clip off, and that's fine. Just make sure you do that one screw 
that goes back here, you put it back in because that's a structural screw, the furthest one back. And uh, put the other screw in there just so it's kept in place and you don't lose it. But uh, the pocket clip, I would like it if it didn't have button screws. If it had flush screws, then they could have made this clip uh, smaller this way so that it doesn't stand out from the knife as far. Like a little tighter radius on this curve back here. But it is a deep carry clip and it's quite functional. So yeah, we're really close to the camera now. But this is the coin pocket. I could just drop it in the coin pocket and you know it hides there, no problem. Pull it back out or you know, put it over the pocket and see there's one of the shortfalls. Since they made it small, it doesn't come up high enough right here. And so it doesn't want to climb over. You have to sort of, I have to anyways, I lift up a little bit on this and then I can get it over and then there you go. So this clip, while it's okay and it does hold the knife in place and it hides the uh, knife in the pocket very well, it's something that they probably could have uh, done a little bit different work on it and made it even better. Uh, maybe for future editions of it, um, they might be able to do that, I don't know. But this has got to come up a little bit. I can, I can bend that, I can bend it up just a little bit. You don't want to bend it too high, but uh, just a little bit higher. Um, and then it would work fine. It's got good retention, it's got good springiness. You know, it wants to hold on, so that's quite good. Lots of access in here to those screws. And those screws are in good condition. They're not stripped out or anything. Uh, sometimes on small knives, I find, um, I don't know why, but the assembly of them, very often the screws get a little chewed up or something. I don't know if the uh, employees at factories care less when they're putting together little knives. I, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, these are just fine. I'm not too terribly fond of the sort of the star kind of shape on the Torx. Um, you know, Torx has got sort of rounded edges instead of pointed, but these are pointed, but they're not particularly soft or anything. I have not had uh, these screws do anything. You know, I took this thing apart and put it back together, and uh, actually maybe right now is a good time to show you what it looks like taken apart. Well, here's the knife taken apart, and I learned a few things when I took it apart. Uh, they did use some thread locker, just a little bit in there. That's totally fine. G10 handle scales, yep, certainly are G10 all the way through. And uh, they've got these nice phosphor bronze washers. Well, they're fairly nice. Uh, they're a little bit rough on one side, smooth on the other side, which is totally standard on uh, phosphor bronze washers. I usually like to uh, polish them on both sides uh, and then I've got a little bit better action. So I might do that, but they are, you know, nice on one side. So you put the nice side next to the blade on either side. I learned that we've got uh, free spinning pivot pins, which I don't prefer. I like pivot pins that aren't free spinning. I did have to use two screwdrivers to take it apart, which you know, sometimes can be a bit uh, finicky, but it wasn't that bad because, you know, I was able to hold the screwdriver and the knife with one hand and then just turn it loose. So it wasn't super, super tight. So not a big problem there, although I prefer fixed pivot pins. Uh, the other thing I learned is it looks like this section here gets put together and then these rods have been peened. They've at least been peened on one side. On the other side, uh, this side it's been peened, and on this side it doesn't quite look like it's been peened, but they're pretty tight. And I'm not going to pry this apart because I might not be able to easily get it back together again. If those were peened, I'd have to take some metal off and, you know, I'm just not going to do that. But you don't need to take it further apart than this to clean it quite well. Uh, you can clean on the inside and you can get in here, uh, clean those surfaces and lube it up and all that stuff. So that's the knife taken apart. Let's get back to the rest of the review. There you go. It's well made. And even if I hold it in the light just right, 
You can see those bronze washers because they are not super thin. They've got a, a decent thickness to them. And, um, you know, there's a little bit of sound there. You may be able to hear, but not much. It's not, you know, it doesn't drop. Wherever you stop, it stops. Uh, if you want it to be really free, then you'll get some blade play. But right now there's uh, no blade play. You maybe can feel a tiny, tiny bit of movement side to side, but I wouldn't call it play. Um, and then lockup is solid. There's no up and down play on the lockup. And uh, check that out. Lockup is very good. And there's jimping here. Makes it easy to uh, go and close the knife when you want to. That hole, I don't know. I think I would prefer a little thumb stud instead of that hole. But I can, if I use my fingers, I pinch. And then I have to move my thumb a little over and push up. And one hand deployment works just fine that way. If there's thumb studs, I think it would deploy even better. Uh, nothing big, nothing sticking out further than the body of the knife. Uh, but that would be nice. But two hand opening works just great too. Uh, it's just one hand is a little tricky. It's not very smooth. So this is effectively a two hand opening knife. So uh, hey, my friends in Germany could probably have this knife without any problems. We've got a stone wash finish, which I really like. And just little touches like this swedge here, that helps give it a little bit extra look. I would probably like it to be a little higher up this hollow grind and um, come a little bit thinner at the edge. But the handle is very nice. It's um, under two ounces in weight. So, you know, you could take that off and then just put a little loop here and have it as a keychain knife if you want to. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you could use this. And uh, there's a lot of little nice things about this knife. Let's go over the sizes and the dimensions, all that kind of information. And uh, this will be on the corner of the screen here while I'm talking about those things. The weight of this knife, 52 grams, 1.85 ounces. Nice and light. The sharpness from the factory, I got uh, on my tester 165 best dimensions now. The length of the cutting edge is 5.06 centimeters, 1.99 inches. Blade length, just a tiny bit more. Tip to the G10 here is 5.09 centimeters, two inches on the nose. The thickness of the blade is 2.86 millimeters. That's 0.1125 of an inch, so just under an eighth of an inch, well, a little bit under an eighth of an inch. Now, the blade depth, uh, you know, I usually go an inch up from the sharpness twill. Uh, this time I'm measuring it right at the beginning of this swedge right here, so where my nails are. 1.91 centimeters, that's uh, three quarters of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind at that spot is uh, 0.63 millimeters, 24 and a half thousandths of an inch. And I would prefer this to, you know, be a little bit thinner. 20 thousandths of an inch would be quite good. Oh, I haven't said yet what steel this is. This is 9CR18 MOV stainless steel, which is a good budget stainless steel. Uh, suits this knife quite well. It's better than the 8CR13 and uh, a whole lot better than 7CR17. Uh, I like this steel quite a lot. It's, uh, I've, it's done very well for me. And now for the grind angles. Oh, I don't have it on this piece of paper. I'll put the grind angles on the screen. Um, how, the difference from one side to the other. Uh, now for the handle, the handle length, I'm not counting the uh, pocket clip because it sticks out just a little bit further. The handle length is 7.3 centimeters, 2.87 inches. The grip area, so between those two fingers, about six centimeters, about two and a quarter centimeters, maybe a tiny bit more than that. The thickness of the handle is 1.15 centimeters. That's 0.453 of an inch. I like that. The handle depth, it's biggest right here. That is 2.21 centimeters. That's 0.87 of an inch. When the knife is closed, it's widest right there. And that is 2.63 centimeters, 1.036 inches. The total length of this knife from the tip to the end, again, not counting the pocket clip, 12.4 centimeters, 4.88 inches. Quite good. 
the uh, balance point on this knife when the pocket clip is on it is right there. And it'd be a little bit more this way towards the pivot pin if the pocket clip was off. But yeah, you don't really worry about the balance on a knife like this. How much does this knife cost? I got mine through Integrity Knives in Canada, integrityknives.com. And they sell it for $46.99 Canadian. They've got the uh, gray bluish kind of color in stock and uh, they're waiting for more stock for the other colors. You can also buy it directly from Revo Knives. They charge 25 US dollars and uh, they're out of stock too. So they've got more being made. Uh, but uh, White Mountain Knives has got this in stock. They've got most of the two of the colors in stock right now, I think. They charge $28.99 US there, but you can get 10% off with coupon code CCE. And that makes it $26.09. So, you know, a dollar and nine cents more than at uh, Revo Knives website. That's pretty good if you're in a hurry to get it, maybe as a stocking stuffer for somebody. I do not have uh, prices in the UK or in uh, the EU. Uh, if somebody knows of places there that you can get these Revo knives, please let me know and I'll leave links down below. Thank you to everybody who uses my links. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, if I find other links where this is, I'll let you know. But if you're in Canada, uh, you know, support your local Canadian store. Well, it's not quite local if you live like in BC or something or in Newfoundland or but it is a Canadian store, so thank you so much for shopping there. You can also save 10% at Integrity Knives as well with coupon code CCE. So that's a good thing. What do I like and dislike about this knife? There's very little that I dislike about this knife. The couple tiny things are uh, this section here. I wish this choil would come out just a little bit further so that uh, the sharpening wouldn't go up the plunge. Small thing. Thickness behind the grind, you know, maybe a little bit thinner would be nice. Small thing. Pocket clip, you know, flat screws and a little bit smaller this way. And a little, little more bend up here. Those are really small things. You know, there's four of them, but they're all really small. There's, n there's nothing that would stop me from buying this knife a second time. Well, I didn't buy it the first time. Uh, disclaimer, I did get it given to me by uh, Integrity Knives. So there's that. Uh, I still try to give as non-biased and as uh, plain and honest review as I possibly can, which I do on all knives. What do I like about this knife? The general design is awesome. We don't know who designed it. It's uh, an internal design by Revo Knives, as far as I know. Uh, you know they did a good job with it. I really like this thing. Uh, might change, like I said, the pocket clip. I mean, the uh, thumb stud. That would be a good thing. But again, that's just a small thing that's really not that big of a deal for a knife like this. I don't mind having to use two hands to open it uh, or, you know, being a little bit slower with one hand. Uh, I guess you could learn it over time and get quicker. Uh, you know, that's not a big deal for a knife like this. Comfortable in hand. I like that it's almost half an inch thick. It's got extra thickness this way compared to some knives and you can just get a solid grip on it. at least I can delicate cutting you know forceful cutting if you need to open some packages you know, it just works lock up is perfect exactly what I want a new knife to be nice little jimping there to make it easy to disengage the lock when you want to detent very good you know, lanyard hole. You know, all these things are very good on this knife. I like the look of this thing. And some of the other colors, you know, they might be better than black, but black is pretty popular as well. So if you're in the market for a little knife, maybe consider the Vipera by Revo Knives. Thank you so much, my friends, for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. It's pretty near the end of the month. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. And remember, everyone, Cut towards your chum, not your thumb.